Well, still here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, one of my aspirations was to connect with my friend, Pastor Robert Morgan, who lives very near to here, originally uh, for a long time, pastoring Donaldson Fellowship uh, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. But Pastor Morgan, you've been a great friend to Lamb and Lion Ministries, so welcome to oh, this episode of Prophetic Perspective. You are so welcome. Yeah, I can walk to the hotel from my house, oh, uh, but I grew up, and I'm a Tennessean by nature, but I grew up very uh, far uh, up in the mountains of Northeast Tennessee, and I still go up there a lot. I have a home there, my family home we kept. But, uh, but I spend most of the time here. This is a, a good base for operations. Well, you are a busy man, uh, serving the Lord faithfully in many different variety of ways, but one of the ways you serve is through your, your writing. And so we were so glad to be able to connect with you based on your book about Revelation and the 50 greatest events in world history. Mm -hmm. And that really launched our Revelation series. So what do you see happening in the world today that demonstrates to, to you and to our viewers that we are living in the season of the Lord's return with the very signs of the times being manifest around us? Well, the chaos in our world is more intense than it's ever been and more dangerous than it's ever been. Uh, with Putin riding on uh, nuclear armed uh, aircraft and Xi Jinping threatening uh, uh, cyber invasions. I mean, all of that just this morning, I heard all of that. Uh, but it, it, every morning it's like that. Every morning you wake up and you hear something about Kim Jong-un or the Ayatollah Israel is in crisis with, with, uh, with all of its neighbors. Uh, and the thing that makes today different than this kind of disruption 50 or 100 years ago is how close we are to the potential of a catastrophic event happening that would engulf the entire world. That wasn't true earlier. Uh, it began to be true in World War I. Um, but one person uh, punching a button in Moscow or breaking a test tube in China, uh, or one rogue terrorist unleashing uh, some weapon, it could engulf the entire world in a way that would make uh, an existential threat to this globe that would immediately lead to the forming of a, a one world government and to the kind of events that we read about. That hasn't been true until now, no. but it's true now. And we need to, uh, I, I was just studying uh, today about the world court in The Hague. Uh, you know, there are many experts who believe that that, right now the, the world court doesn't have any real authority uh, to impose its sentences or, or its decisions on, on other nations. But a lot of experts think it should. You know, and once that happens, then we are, we are there in that one world system that, sure. that we are anticipating. So, so today is different from all of the other generations because of the potential of catastrophic global events that are existential to the human family. You know, I think you're exactly right. We talk about the culmination of, of signs. In other words, there have been individual signs in all the different categories, nature, society, boy, aren't they multiplying, spiritual, world politics, technology. Israel, but now they're, they're coming together. They're converging like never before. And, and many, even without spiritual discernment of having the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, realize something is amiss. They don't have understanding, and yet many are so distraught that we have a rise in discouragement, despair, depression at least. And yet for a Christian, we should recognize that the Lord told us these things would happen because while we will have trouble in this world, He doesn't want our hearts to be troubled. And so what is the assurance we have that in spite of all the, the negative signs, the, the threats, we can be at peace? Well, all the way through the Bible, we have the message that God is in charge, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, I was speaking last night from Isaiah 40 at, uh, at, at a worship service. And in Isaiah 40, it says, all of these rulers you're afraid about, there is nothing. They'll be swept away like the chaff, it, uh, Isaiah said. Um, and, I, and I began thinking of the world leaders that are so notorious. And in fact, you know, some American politicians uh, who think they are, are so powerful right now and are so clinging to their, to their uh, base of authority and power. And the Bible says they're like chaff. They'll be blown away. And the Lord rules in the affairs of men. And everything that we read prophetically for Christians tells us to look forward. To look forward. 
And Peter says that two or three times in 2 Peter 3. He says we should be looking forward to these things. And that's, that is future-based therapy. That is anticipation. And that's a very important thing for us psychologically. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this too, Tim. My wife is in heaven. And I have a lot of anticipation about seeing her again in heaven. Yes. I think for the believer, looking forward is just a glorious exercise and and generating the anticipation that should be a part of our hope. The joy that awaits us makes all the sufferings of this life pale in comparison mm -hmm. if you know Jesus Christ. And so really that's our, our ultimate goal is to make people aware of what's happening, but to point them to Christ and encourage them to put their faith in Christ. Well, Pastor Morgan, I'm so glad that you are continuing to serve faithfully. I pray the Lord's blessing on you uh, through your writing, through all the appearances you make. And again, what a blessing you have been just as a friend to our ministry and to me personally. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Godspeed.